Geyser Batteries was uh, set up just uh, two years ago, uh, end of 2018, but there is a long history of innovation that preceded, precedes it. Uh, my partner has started uh, with his team in late 80s, actually, and uh, in the battery space, it really the know-how and the accumulation of the knowledge and the feeling the electrochemistry at the fingertips is what matters. For me personally, it's uh, a really great uh, sort of next thing in, in my life. I'm a PhD physicist originally, and the beauty of turning science into money is uh, absolutely astonishing. And also this feeling of you being in sort of in charge of commercializing and bringing to life something that is so unique, something that would just basically die in the laboratory without you is uh, really what uh, makes you waking up in the morning. So what we do, we do a new class of batteries. So we <coughs> are combining an electrostatic way of uh, storing energy that is typical for the devices called supercapacitors with uh, what is kind of more common uh, electrochemistry, storing energy through a reversible chemical reaction. So uh, importantly, following the previous work in the supercapacitor space, we had been producing them at uh, scale. We are still using water as a solvent for electrolyte. This is where the batteries have started, uh, from where batteries have moved into the space of organic electrolytes, and organic here is unfortunately is not uh, kind of the term from the sustainability perspective, but purely a chemical term. Uh, we're still using water as a solvent, and that gives us huge benefits in terms of safety, uh, reliability of these devices, and simplicity of the production method. The sustainability is good, but the reason people would need that is, uh, and actually <laughs> do need that as uh, our work with customers show, is uh, the practical, the functional characteristics of the devices. There is a major underserved need in the area of high power batteries, a high power energy storage where neither supercapacitors nor lithium ion batteries are delivering uh, good enough characteristics at uh, good enough cost. Uh, the, I mentioned supercapacitors, so uh, these are just some of the clients ranging from uh, car audio systems which, uh, for which uh, the we had been producing hundreds of thousands of units to uh, high power uh, railway locomotives, thousand volt systems. And uh, the essentially, if you combine our devices, uh, so far called with this uh, ugly name of electrochemical recuperators, but we're coming from science, uh, comparing them with supercaps and batteries, basically we're better and cheaper than supercaps, and we are very competitive against lithium ion. As we scale, as we reach the, uh, the capacities of uh, lithium ion industries, and we're talking here about uh, four uh, magnitudes of scale that we need to increase our production, uh, we will be competitive against high-power lithium-ion uh, batteries face-to-face. -face. Briefly about the organic, super organic uh, electrolytes against uh, aqueous electrolytes. So, <coughs> as I said, organic electrolytes is what currently the industry uh, is based on. This is the stuff that burns in uh, lithium-ion, and uh, it is... Uh, not the fire that is of danger per se, but actually the toxicity of the fumes that you get out of the lithium ion battery. And there's a lot of uh, troubles associated with this, uh, both uh, in the industry and also the policymakers are working actively on that. In our case, the system is totally safe. And also, most importantly, from the, again, from the Green Deal perspective, we are significantly simplifying the process. Uh, Energy storage based on organic electrolytes is just as good as dry it is. So people are desperately trying to eliminate water from the system. And uh, this requires something like 300 watt hours of energy to burn to produce just one watt hour of energy of a battery or capacity. So we don't need that. So the process is simple and uh, with minimum, if not zero, CO2 footprint. So. This is a sustainable battery. We produce it with minimum CO2, no conflict uh, materials involved. The lifetime of it is 10 to 100 times longer than of a normal battery, which uh, further decreases uh, environmental impact. And because of the peculiar engineering, uh, which I will not discuss here, bipolar design, it is very easy to disassemble and recycle. So from the recycling perspective, it's also a great thing. So safe for people, so safe for the planet, and actually better and cheaper. 
And uh, clearly, we need to uh, get onto the market with that. And there is a huge response. We just started, but we already have POCs uh, going on in all the target sectors. Uh, some of our devices are already in the buses on the streets, uh, in POCs, and uh, automotive OEMs are interested. So, I mean, we're very excited about this stuff. Thanks.